Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're talking about the new LEGO road plates and a solution that's easy, cost effective and looks good that I like to call the Robin Hood Bricks system. LEGO introduced a new road plate system in 2021, initially as part of five sets including this one, 60304. The main elements are 8 studs by 16, 16 studs by 16, uh, but all of them are two plates in depth. Now, the main issue with this system, apart from a complete lack of corners, is the fact that the sides of the road are lower than the road surface itself. And that means that when we put buildings up to the side, they look a little odd as they're too low down. What's more, old base plates are a different thickness, and sets like modular buildings just can't be integrated simply. Add to that the fact that the old system had a 20 stud wide road, and this 16 studs is very narrow indeed when you try and have two wider vehicles passing each other on one of these streets, let alone cars that are even wider, like speed champions. So we can do better, I think. So for my demonstration, I'm going to surround a corner modular, represented here by this bright green base plate, with new roads on two sides. Uh, I will be using a proper full modular later at the end, but this is just easier for demonstration purposes. Uh, so the first stage is to create a frame, because there's no avoiding the fact that we need to raise this modular up in height but we'll do that in a very simple way by resting it on a frame of two plates height. Now, as you can see, any plates can be used for this as they won't be seen, which does make it a more cost-effective system than some. Uh, and what LEGO collection doesn't have lots of oddly colored plates or oddly shaped plates that are available for use, or even damaged ones like this one with some sun damage on the edge. You could even use some of the many green plates that you get uh, as part of these road sets, or even an old train base if you've got one because they're two plates high as well. Now of course if you're doing a row of these modulars you could make this framework uh, span all of them, they don't have to be isolated, and one of the edges could straddle both of the two neighbours. Uh, but for now, uh, the one thing you need to remember is that you need to leave the one stud width boundary of the top layer free on the sides that we're going to be adding road to. Uh, and that's so when we add our road plates, we've got the ability to connect the frame to the new road plates with two by four plates. And that makes the whole structure very strong and stops any individual uh, element of it wobbling around. So I'm going to add that on the front as well. Now, just so I can show you a variety of different sort of setups and uh, so on, I'm actually going to be using uh, one kind of width of road here, going off into the distance to represent a sort of more narrow side street or maybe a one-way street or something like that. Whereas here, I'm going to be using a double thickness of which I've only put half in at the moment to represent a much more major road that's using two 16 wide uh, plates for its width. And that's why I've got the white dashed line along here for this road, and I've got it along the middle of this one for this smaller road. Indeed, you could use the uh, eight by 16 ones as a very sort of narrow alleyway, kind of in that direction, the ones without the printing on, uh, to represent uh, an alleyway that's got trash cans in it and maybe some shady characters or whatever. And I've got two crossings here in quick succession, which wouldn't really be realistic, of course, but uh, I think it's fair enough for demonstration purposes. Uh, and now if I add on our modular, just balanced on for now, we can get on with removing the outside layer of tiles, which are always this sort of one wide uh, layer. Uh, so we can start connecting our corner modular with our road system. Right, so I've stripped off all of the very edge tile layer from this corner modular, and it's just resting on top of our framework at the moment. And this is when we start pinning the two different sections together. And I'm going to be using one wide plates, 
to go alongside the base plate and act as the curb, and then more tiles on top to join the two layers together. And that makes a very strong connection indeed, but one that's quite easily reversed if you did want to move your modulars around. And I can use any sort of combination of sizes of plates and so on that I happen to have available. Uh, and that layer indeed does cover up a lot of the ugliness of these new road plates. Now I've only done a one wide curb into this section because it's quite a narrow road already and I don't want to use up too much of it but here I've got a lot more road surface to play with given that this is actually the central line so what I'm going to do on this side is actually have a three wide curb uh, but before I start adding that I need to add something onto the corner uh, and I'm going to use this curved plate three by three, though I could use uh, an angled equivalent if I wanted. And it's important that we pick one of these shapes that can be tiled uh, very accurately from above. So those two work rather well. Uh, so I'm going to add that there. And already this depth looks really good. Uh, and that shape looks really clean as well. Now, when we're moving to the three wide curb, uh, we can use for the first two uh, studs any old color we want so I'm going to use some blue here and that's purely just because uh, it's a waste of more useful colors to a degree so there's the first two studs and you can see that's all very firmly connected indeed then we do the same method that we did here along here with a single width so obviously you can go for any combination of widths you wanted. You could go even deeper into the road uh, and do something quite interesting there. But that is a really clean look. And I just love the depth of this pavement or sidewalk over the road level. Uh, and indeed, this is also higher than the road as well. Now, this is only the start of things, of course, because now we can really start to experiment. We can do some storm drains, for example, just by removing some of our edging, we can very, very easily just have a little gap, which is where all the water would flow if it were raining. So that looks really great. Uh, another one we can do is just to remove a bit that's near a crossing and just add some curved slopes. And by doing that, we've kind of got one of those dips that would be in a pavement or sidewalk that would lead up to a crossing. So already this is starting to look rather fantastic. But if we want to, we can go even more complicated than that. Now the storm drains on this side aren't the only way we can get rid of excess water. We can also remove some of these tiles to just put normal grill pieces into the street level and fill in the gap with a different shaped tile. And I think that looks even more effective. Very good. Uh, I've added a give way or yield line here. So a vehicle coming out of this road, assuming it drove on the right, would have to stop at that line. But you could also get rid of the central reservation lines here and actually have it as a one-way road, perhaps, with another one of those lines in there and some no-entry signs at this junction. But just as ever, it is really easy to remove one of these two by twos to either put in, say, a crossing sign or maybe a traffic light for this junction. So no change there. But we can go even further. I could remove this whole second section over here and actually have a change in direction of the sidewalk. Uh, and now I'm going to use the angled version of the corner I used earlier just to bring in the curb a little bit. Now you can get all sorts of different shaped wedge plates and so on to do different combinations of this. So we really could have had this pavement or sidewalk coming right into this double width road if we wanted and really put some quite interesting shapes into the profile of it. But for here, I'm just going to add some one wide to that little section there, just so we can have a little bit of variation. And maybe that is a parking spot for a car because there's still plenty of width here to get by. Uh, and we could even put a parking meter there to represent a proper parking space. 
So I think you'll agree, it's really starting to come together and look like a real street. All right, well, this is starting to look very interesting and realistic with our parking space and meter, our grates, our street furniture, and a cat waiting to cross the road. Uh, and I've actually added another pavement or sidewalk on the other side just so we can uh, show this street in its entirety because there's more than one way we can do a crossing of course. The original set has some of these yellow speed bumps just to flank uh, a crossing to slow traffic down but I figure another way of doing it is to actually raise the entire crossing above street level and kind of have it level with the pavement layer. Uh, and how I'll do that is by adding two 2x4 two plates into these slots here and then get the whole crossing set up with tiles on all four of its side bits uh, and then put that actually on top of those newly added 2x4 plates and then I can push that all the way down and have the last striped tile being a 2x4 uh, and then to fill in the transition between this higher level and the lower one, I can just use more of these curved slopes, just like we used here, to go on that edge. Uh, and indeed, the other edge, if this road was continuing on, it would go something like that. Now, you don't have to use white. You could use dark bluish grey, or you could use black and white stripes, or something like that, with no problem whatsoever. Uh, and then we can just tidy up some of the gaps with tiles and have maybe a lady crossing the road. But I think you'll agree that that adds even more texture to an area where we've got the subtle storm drains and the crossing dip already, uh, and it looks rather smashing. And here is exactly the same setup, but with a modular in place. And this is my own modular, which I call Fast Food Corner because of its iconic sign on the corner with the holy trinity of fast food, burger, fries, and shake. But focusing on the road, there is our 3D crossing. Storm drain there next to the uh, hydrant with a dog. Our normal crossing with the sloped entryway. The curve of that lovely raised sidewalk or pavement. Our grills and our parking space with meter. And I think you'll agree that the different widths of these two roads and the different features on and around them make this whole setup look really good. Uh, and the fact that the modular is now at the right level, is firmly attached to its surroundings, but not irredeemably so, is a really <laughs> good bonus as well. And after all, what we were trying to achieve from the outset. But that, uh, I think that curb being two plates high is really the bit that gets me every time. I think that looks tremendous. So anyone who says that the new road system is no good, well, maybe they just haven't tried it this way yet, which is the Robin Hood brick system. <laughs> Well, I think that's been really good fun playing with these new road plates uh, and developing a new system that works rather well. Uh, but did we achieve our initial three objectives? Uh, I do think the system is cost effective in that we only really used a very small number of additional pieces uh, around the edge of these pavements uh, in light bluish grey. Of course, any system uses this number of tiles. Uh, and the greater number of plates used to support the modular are pretty much languishing in every LEGO collector's collection. I do think this system is very easy. None of the techniques we've used today were particularly complicated. It's just about pinning the modular in against the row plates, uh, all at the right level after all. Uh, but the real proof of the pudding is whether it looks good. Uh, and I think we succeeded massively in that regard. I think this looks really realistic. I really love this difference in depth, as you know. Uh, and with the building being at the right level now, I think uh, it's an absolute success. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. 
Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a brick haul. Uh, and then on Friday, we'll be going back to the fairground for another edition of Fairground Fridays. So until then, see you!